In this video, we're going to talk about how you can start your own business from scratch. We have a former overseas Filipino who used to work in Singapore and now has her own company. If you want to know more, check this video out. Please subscribe to Marvin Germo's YouTube channel. And hit the bell and stay till the end of the video so that you hear her backstory on how she started her own business. Hey guys, so in this video, we have Tina Baltasar. She's the co-founder of Baltasar Shoes, what you see here at the backdrop. Tina! Hi there. Hi Marvin. Yeah, hello. First question, how did you start this journey what's your backstory for people to know because a lot of people want to go into business but they don't know where to start how to start so how do you do it prior to Baltazar I was actually working for a fashion um, website in Singapore mm -hmm. I was doing buying and merchandising um, so I was I already had exposure to fashion brands to e-commerce and then prior to that I was working for a retail company here in Manila um, that company was engaged in the operations of specialty stores. Mm. So also fashion, retail, merchandising. Mm. And I've always wanted to start a business, but I never had the chance to, you know, to do it because um, I was an employee for several years, for almost 15 years. Okay. <laughs> so the jump is really like big for me. But then I saw this um, I, I had this opportunity and I really saw the potential that's why I went for it. Mm. But was this your first venture or did you try other other businesses that was those businesses did not do well and then which led you into this or this was something that I'm, I'm gonna sell shoes for the rest of my life? Actually, you know, since I've always wanted to, to have a business, I even majored in entrepreneurship in college. Wow! Yes, that was after I graduated, I started a small business with my classmates. So that went on for maybe a year and a half. Then we all went into your, you know, your own jobs and went to corporate. Mm -hmm. And then while I was working, I also started with some kind of small passion projects here and there. But um, you know, it was only because out of hobby, not really like real business. Then it was only later on when I was able to um, have, um, how would I say, much more savings set aside for for the business. And I would say like more parang um, gusto and talagang parang I really want to do this because if I don't do it then now, then when will I ever start a business? So, yeah. mm. You said you were here parang 15, 15 years working. At what point in that 15 year uh, level of employment mm -hmm. that you knew that I'm gonna start my business? Because I always tell people, I knew it already two weeks into my first job. Sabi ko, I'm not gonna be an employee forever. I already, I already knew it. Eh. So for you, what was when was the time that you saw um, this is not this employment thing? This is not forever for me. Right. Um, yes. Because grew, I was in my second job. Then I then I started having a family. When I realized there's also benefits to entrepreneurship and starting your own business. One is you get to have a flexible schedule. You get to spend more time with um, your family, you know. And number two, also the opportunity to earn more is also there when you have your own business. So I said to myself, you know what, this can't I can't be an employee for, for the rest of my life also. And I've always wanted to have a business. So I worked my way slowly. It didn't mm -hmm. just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So um, careful preparation, also research about the business before I finally said, okay, you know what, I can do this. Was this your first choice when you're reading? Because there's a lot of and you can yeah. wear clothes, bags, uh, hats, etc. How, how did this go? How did you stumble upon this? Um, okay, so it was actually the idea was founded in Singapore. Okay. So my husband is a private banker in Singapore, and he would always wear um, parang suits and mm -hmm. dress shoes mm -hmm. for client meetings, for sales meetings, etc. So um, he would buy shoes. He started buying shoes like Ma from high-end luxury mm -hmm. brands, leather shoes, no? but it, they were very expensive and not sustainable. Then we also tried the mga shoe brands and malls, na medyo mass market. Um, but yun nga, the quality wasn't very good. So we ended up parang 
replacing the pairs so often. So we realized, why isn't there a men's shoe brand that offers quality products at fair and reasonable prices? Mm -hmm. There weren't a lot of options out there, which is why we decided to found Balthazar. Mm. So on, on the journey of doing this, based on what you're telling me, you did the due diligence, you started to research. Yes, research. But the biggest, the biggest uh, I think, hindrance for a lot of people is, what's the first step? Uh, after having this idea, having this re realization that, hey, I want to start my own shoe company, uh, what, what, what did you do? Yeah, that's a good question. So firstly, we really wanted to use um, premium quality materials. So for example, for all our dress shoes from Balthazar, make use of full grain calf leather, not just on the upper part, not just on the outside, but also on the inner lining of the shoe. If you're not familiar, full grain calf leather is several grades higher than the commercially popular genuine leather and it's also the topmost layer of the cowhide making it more durable and also more breathable so there's not much chemicals treated on it and it doesn't undergo any harsh process so it is more breathable on the feet unfortunately this raw material is not available here in the philippines because um, you know, the humidity, the climate, and all that. So we had to source it overseas. Mm -hmm. So we had to look for suppliers. We had to look for factories who we can partner with to provide this material. Which moves on to the second tip, I would say, to start a business is probably to like really research on the right suppliers. So because we had to go overseas, we needed to really like nail down and pin down the right type of suppliers and um, the factory so we did ocular visits we even sought the assistance of um, uh, government agencies mm. and we even asked the help of a translator to come with us for our meetings so that nothing gets lost in translation but when you when you did this how how long was the time in between you know, from you uh, you thinking that I'm going to start the business oh, into doing all this research because all of the research you were telling me I'm not really a, I'm, I'm not an expert in shoes and I okay. so during a year and a half oh. I was doing the research while I was even still working in mm. Singapore so parang I needed to lock down on the suppliers we needed to really um, parang find the right suppliers before before making the jump, before resigning, mm -hmm. before moving back here, because it's super important for us to provide you know, quality products. And by working directly with these factories, mm -hmm. with the suppliers, we're able to keep our prices also fair and reasonable. Okay, so how long have you been running the company already? Launched um, the business third quarter last year. Okay. Um, but then it's a, it's a corporation, so we incorporate it. almost a year in the rent here mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's very inspiring. You know? uh, the reason why I make videos like this, and the reason why you're in the video also, is it's nice to see Filipinos who have been working abroad come home and then do something that will allow them to make money here. Because that's the dream of a lot of Filipinos yes. also that that work abroad, that they have they could have enough money also that right. they could also come back. Actually, Marvin, yeah, yeah. being an online uh, company, we could actually launch it naman anywhere in the world. But we decided to launch it here in Manila, in the Philippines. Um, of course, firstly, because this is really our home ground. Um, this is where we are and we're more comfortable here. And second, parang it just makes sense to bring back rent to your country to start here and provide you know, employment. And there's a lot of opportunity talaga here in the Philippines. When you're starting, uh, it's, it's been a year, what's the biggest challenge naman for people who are, who are, who are starting? Uh, is it uh, getting people to know who you are, or getting your first clients, or what price do you want to sell it? That's true. Um, one of the biggest challenges would be, um, because we're an online company, we don't have any physical shops. So customers really would like to um, try on uh, shoes. Mm -hmm. They want to. They want to feel it. How does it feel? Mm -hmm. In the pictures, you can't really see that, right? So we needed to establish uh, guide shops in the city. So where we are right now, this is Philippa and Sons here in BGC. So it's a guide shop which offers customers to try on for size, to view it, to feel it before they actually purchase online. So we have guide shops here, and then we also have in Makati City. 
So, yun yung one of the challenges talaga is to address the issue of customers who want to try it on first before buying online. Does competition matter when you're starting or you just develop something that will make you also create your own market? A little bit of both. Okay. So, competition does matter. You need to know who are the existing players right now in the market. So, that was also one of um, part of our research. So, we did also a business plan actually. Mm, wow. Oh, wow. Um, old school kind No, no, no. <laughs> so we, we did a feasibility study really to, to see if you know, the competitors are how much will we need to shell out to start a business and all of that. Because you need to know what your competitors are doing, how much are they charging for the products. And the other thing also is you need to also carve your own niche, your own market. Um, kami, we're purely online and all our shoes are ready to wear. So we mm. already have the stocks ready to ship to the customer. When I start, when I started out, I'm gonna ready, fire, then yeah, aim, yeah. and then I just, I just learn, I just learn from how I, I guess, tweak it from the mistakes. How I've learned a lot from the mistakes that I've made. Uh, so I'll, end, I'll end this video with two questions. Number one, a mistake that you've learned from all of this that you wish you should have done it better, and then from that mistake, what did you learn from it? There are so much things that we actually. Um did, no, na parang super calculated kasi, like you really thought about things ganyan. but there are some things that you kind of like do um, spontaneously because you want to you know adjust with the market I think one of that would be like when you when you run um, certain uh, events um, you really need to know who to partner with mm -hmm. um, so we've done a series of offline events so much I would I wouldn't say it was a mistake I would say it was a learning um, it's part of the learning process. No? You need to really um, carefully choose who you partner with. Talagam para to maximize your time, your effort. Because you we're know, you we're a small lean company, so we have very limited resources. Okay, amazing. Last question. Okay. Uh, former OFW. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right? Former Filipino working abroad. Yes. Uh, what's your tip for people who also want to do what you're doing? Uh, how much do they need to save? Mm -hmm. Is there is there parang a percentage that when I get this, I'm coming home, I'm right. starting the business. And to add to that also, no, syempre you had funds for the business, but was there an amount of cash that you, you would think na, sige, I need this also, so that if the company doesn't do well in a year, two years, we'll still survive. Kasi madami naman, just to uh, give you some perspective. Madami sobrang na-inspire when they see videos like this. They resign quickly without doing the math or I really want to <laughs> sell milk, milk tea, franchise this milk tea brand and then they don't... They, everyone's, everyone's too optimistic when they start their own business that they don't think that if things can also go wrong. Eh. So yeah, how, did, how did you do it guys? Sobrang yaman. No! I know. Siguro number one is working abroad. You have, you have um, the opportunity to obviously to learn to, to earn more so with that comes bigger responsibility to save more and we're not always going to be working abroad for the rest of our lives right so ako, from the start pa lang, I really had the vision that I would one day start my business here in the Philippines so from day one pa lang, I worked towards a savings plan with my husband on how we can actually achieve that and then before we actually really jump ship to go back home, we made sure that we have you have enough savings to probably last you like six months to a year or even more the better. And if you have extra funds, it will be great to dabble into other investments like um, real estate mm. or financial markets. You know, so not not like your whole money is just on on the business. You have other sources of income and cash flow coming in. Yeah, and so I won't suggest to just all of a sudden leave your job and then start the business. It's risky, but um, there's also great risk. And it's it for me. It's fulfilling. No, I've never had a job for more than ten years already. Uh, the ability to live life on your own terms, the ability to wake up when you want, but also the responsibility that if you don't do well, or, do well, or you don't even work or you're, you're just at your couch watching Netflix, then you also you yeah. lose a lot of money as well. So, the, the hustle is every day. Every day, talaga kayo. Mm. That's for. For us business owners, you're always thinking about how to make the business better. You're always thinking about your customers. You're always thinking about how to improve your products. Always in the back of your mind. Okay, I, I hope you guys got a lot from Tina. Uh, we'll have a series of videos with her, so you can. I, I believe you're, there's so much you can learn from her. Sobra, as in uh, when I'm with her, grabe, I'm. I don't know, mama, super. <laughs> but, <laughs> 
<laughs> but I hope you guys got a lot from this video. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon. Thank Bye you. everyone. You need to know like um, how long do you want to keep selling your shoes for. So okay. you need to know Ren, that in order to determine how many stocks you want to bring in. Mm -hmm. So if you first see that okay for this first order of shoes it's going to last you for six months, then you do a forecast of how much sales you're going to make. So that determines how much order you're going to bring in. 